Now let's do some practice problems. Uh, again, this is not a class, but we're going to pretend it is. So we're going to do some practice problems, and then I'll tell you what your homework is for next time. Um, so for practice, I'll do what we do during the Origami Dan 10-minute design challenges. So what we do is, well, there's no, we're not going to time it this time, but what we do is we open up this random, gen, random animal generator. Usually we generate two or three in case there are some annoying options, and we'll just uh, pick one that we like. Okay, let's do a seal, All right? Let me pull up my picture. So let's remember what step one is. So remember, step one is we need to count how many flaps there are. Um, and then step two is we're gonna pick a base. Step three, we're just gonna fold it and we'll see. And maybe we'll learn some of the techniques that you can use, okay? So um, I think we said seal, right? So hopefully there will be a picture of a seal up on the screen and we'll reference that. So what are the flaps? So we need a flap for the head. And again, you always want to make the head a little bit longer than you think you need it so that you can get some nice details and stuff. We need a flap for the tail. Um, and we need the two fins. So that sounds like a fish base to me. So let's go ahead and take our fish base. Now, now we're just going to start shaping. So, And here's where we get stuck. Let's actually, for the challenge, let's do a sea lion. So let me grab a picture of a sea lion. So sea lion's got, um, the tails are split. So one trick that we, we want to learn right off the bat is called point splitting. So this is, um, it, Robert Lang wrote a whole chapter about this. We're just gonna do like two minutes of it. This is chapter five of Origami Design Secrets. And uh, this whole thing we're learning right now is basically chapter four, the traditional basis. So we're gonna split this point into two and then that way you, we can have a have a split tail. So um, there's a sequence for it. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Even if you don't know it, here's what you can do. So I'm just going to use fourths because I like having nice references so I can repeat it. But we can uh, open up the flap like this. And that will widen it out. And if we widen it here, it actually, that's a little too small. So I'm just going to, I want it a little bit wider. So we can widen it out like that. And see how it kind of sticks out more? We can, we can, well, I don't know for sure, but we can probably shape this into a nice tail. Let's do that again on the other side. And remember, um, this is the first try, so don't expect to have a completely polished model. The goal is to be able to, it's like answer the question, right? Someone asks you, hey, make me a sea line. They're not expecting something like completely polished. Most, um, the fact that you can come up with anything on the spot will impress most non-folders, so don't, don't worry too much. Okay, now let's, um, let's fold it like this. I want, we, we want the arms to be out. So let's, let's see. And we got this nasty color change. We don't like that. So let's just uh, hide that away. I guarantee you this has not been staged or anything. So now we can kind of see that our, our, our um, things are split. This is not the this is not the optimal way that Lang taught, but um, I didn't memorize it. And the point is that you don't need to memorize it. Um, you can kind of just wing it. But um, if you want, if you ever need to split a point, kind of like a fin or something, you can kind of do what I just did. So let's we'll we'll, we'll save that for later. We got it. Yeah, we got the base ready for shaping that. Um, oh, I'm actually looking at the picture again. We're not. We're kind of off proportion. But that's okay. Okay, um, our fin. Hmm. We need to fix our proportions. So the fin, I've realized that our tail is too short. This is way too short. So I'm going to move the fin forward a little bit. So now the fin is like, kind of like here. Okay, and then we'll do the, we'll try to, we'll do our best to mirror it on the other side. And so if this were like a legit design, I would try to find references. But again, this is kind of like, I'm kind of pretending we're doing a 10-minute design challenge on Origami Dan. Which, by the way, if you want to do this with other people, if you think this is fun, you want some more practice, do join the, this, join the, um, the, the, join the server, the description, the invite link will be in the description for sure. Okay. Now, there's our fins. It's 
you know, it's not perfect. But and then we can we'll shape it like this later. We'll later we'll get rid of the extra thickness, so we'll round off this and stuff. But we want to have the whole model kind of in sight before we do that. We need that next. We need the head to be kind of pointed up. So that's an easy thing. We can just reverse fold this. Um, I'm actually going to reverse fold it from like all the way back here. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, feel free to fold along if you want. Well, this is not much of a tutorial. It kind of is. Uh, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If uh, this is a tutorial or not. Okay. That's that. So now we got the angle right. We're in the right. We're in the right ballpark now. Our head is kind of held a little higher. Um, what? How does their pose look? They kind of have their head back a little bit, right? So let's go ahead and. Oh, maybe that's a little too far back. You can tell this is a lot of eyeballing, and uh, that's kind of just, it's not always like this, but a lot of the time this is how the design process goes. It's just a lot of eyeballing. And now, okay, something like that, something like that, just close enough. We'll, we'll, and we can adjust it later, don't worry. Next, let's make the face, so the head. So if I just do this, it looks whack, right? That's a skinny head. I don't like that. And even if I pull it forward, it's still a little sharp and it looks kind of weird, right? So maybe I'll pull it a little further. But here's the trick that you want to learn. So um, this trick will work on any of the bases because they're all the same type of flap. Um, we can just pull the layers down and that'll give us extra thickness, extra width. Pull the layers out. So that's something you can remember. So when you're doing your homework, you can kind of remember that if you need extra thickness you can pull it out like that okay that's a little bit better it's, it's starting to come to shape right it looks a lot different than the traditional seal slash sea lion slash walrus I apologize to all you mo marine biologists but uh, I don't know the difference very well anyways so our head um, it's weird because they don't really have such pointy mouths so let's uh, I don't know if we're minimalistic, we can just tuck it in. And later we can come back and try to shape it better. But I think that's okay for now. Um, this part looks a little weird. I'm gonna pull that, do I wanna pull it back? How do we shape this? I think that's okay. Let's tuck this in. So now we got our, our, base, our base is pretty good. Now let's just, as I said before, the way this round, go ahead and round everything out. And um, if we're using nicer paper, we would, you know, stuff it, treat it with mesocellulose, shape it, make it everything nice and 3D and puffy and round, and so on. Um, but you can tell our design is basically done, right? We've done all the designing, we've done the hard work. Um, it, it does require some shaping skills, but over time you'll get good at this. And again, if you've only given yourself 10 minutes, don't beat yourself up if you can't get anything. Um, no one's really expecting. Like, a, okay, this is, the, I mean, technically this is my first take. I guarantee you this is not staged at all. Um, but I've had a lot of experience with the designing, so it's not too bad for me. Oh, and then the tail. So let's just um, go something like that. And there we go. And I guarantee you, I was not following diagrams. I've never folded anything like this before. This is just my first try, and it's a pretty good design. I'm actually pretty happy with this. It only took less than 10 minutes, so this um, this is that's an example of how we could do it. So remember, pick the count the flaps. So we counted a head, tail, these two, and we disregarded the fact that there's two tails. We just pretended there's one and then shaped it into two which you can do for small flaps. Right. So as a reminder, um, remember, this is just a first fold, right? So this is not a polished model. This is not something I would go and post on Instagram, right? This is, um, I this is just the first fold. And after this, I would, I would go and refold it, try to retrace my steps, maybe use a better paper, you know, try to explore the shaping a little more. We'll do some grafting, grafting which is like the next class, etc. This is just the first draft. So this is only one part of the design process, but it's one of the most important parts point splitting is one trick another trick 
Let me just show you a few more tricks. Uh, I'm not going to use them in an example, but I'll just show you how you can do it. Uh, one trick is for color changes. So for color change, if you want to color change, um, you can, all these corner flaps, so the four and the, the so the color, the, this mostly works on the, the corner flaps. You cannot color change the big center flaps, and it's hard to color change the, the edge flaps too, but you can inside reverse fold like that, and then wrap the layers around like this. Does that make sense? Here, let me do that again. I might have brought that off camera. So insert a reverse fold and wrap everything around. And now our flap is white. And so we can use this. That's one trick you can use, and you can do that on the other side. Just know that it's kind of locked now. Like we cannot un we can't un reverse fold it now. But um, that's the one trick you can use. Um, another trick that's going to save your life is sinking. Right now, these flaps are all kind of fat, and in some models we like that, right? But in other models we don't like that. So we want, we just want to make sure you, you know that sinking is an option. So sinking like this, um, you can sink in. So that's that would be like a, you know, sinking in like halves, right? But I can also sink into fourths, and then zigzag it, etc., like that, and then super thin or thirds or whatever you like. You can also sync it um, at an angle so it's, it becomes a sharper point. Uh, maybe I'll show you what that means because this is not kind of, it's not a very normal thing to do. So it looks something like that. You can sync it and then now you got a thinner flap you can work with. And uh, the center flap will look a little different too. Um, another, th let me sh just show you a few more things you can do. Um, you can just, the more tools you have in your arsenal, the better, the more better prepared you are. So what I mentioned with our, or half bird, half frog base. Here's what that would kind of look like. So um, you can do this. This is kind of its own base. You can use. You might find it handy. Or not. I I, I don't really use this one that much, but it's a it's a thing. Would it be a, a furred or a bog? I don't know. But uh, yeah, it looks something like this. So you got a. You got a frog base on one side, and you got a bird base on the other, and this gives you more. This is, this gives you a lot of options. Okay, um, your homework. Now, there's two reasons why we have homework here. First of all, first and most obvious reason is so that you can get some practice doing it. Like if you just watch the videos and uh, you don't actually do it, you you might think you're learning, but you might not actually be learning anything. And the second reason is I want to I want to know um, how effective. I had, I had explained it today. So if, if you were able to, you know, just go out, leave the video and, and design your own thing right off the bat, then that's great. I don't need to explain it again. But if this is not clear enough, um, you still don't get it, uh, then I want I want to know that. So you can tell me in the comments, whatever, and maybe I'll I'll make a second video or you know explain it again or something like that. Because it it does take a long time to understand designing. I want you to practice using the process of tradition modifying traditional bases. So you can do any animal you want, any or not even animal, you can just do any subject you want. And you can use the random animal generator or whatever, or if you have any ideas. Um, if you want, if you're, if you need ideas, the three animals I suggested uh, that might get you started are um, walrus, giraffe, and ostrich. Those three um, you might have more ease with. So, you know, you can do any of those three or any other animal. So this is obviously a design class, meaning um, ideally I want you to be designing in the homework. But the problem with that is uh, des designing means something original, right? And if we're all going to be doing the same thing for homework, it's not going to be super original, right? Um, another thing, um, so as I said before, like if we're all folding the same thing, there's a decent chance that someone else is going to fold the same thing as you, or a similar thing. like. Um, I'm pretty sure the sea lion exists somewhere out there. Someone has probably designed it already, because it's so simple, right? And if you're, you know, if you're going to go fold your ostrich, there's a good chance someone else is going to fold an ostrich, you know, from the same base, obviously, because we're all using the traditional bases. Um, but if someone says that, oh, that's not your design or whatever, it's already been done before. Don't don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged because as long as you're able to do the process by yourself, as long as you're able to come up your independent discovery, as we say, as long as you're able to do it, that's what really matters. Because if you're able to design the simple model, even if it's already been done before, 
it means you're you're a step closer to designing your own thing, something completely new, something original that undisputably is your own design, like this, right? So just um, do what you can and don't get discouraged if someone's already done it before. Um, this is not a competition; we're we're all learning together. Um, and especially for this lesson, it might feel like everything is kind of copying of each other because the traditional bases have been around for a long time, and one of the downsides to the modern day origami world the ideas out of the traditional bases have been pretty exhausted like there's a lot of stuff that's already been done so but um, in the next class and the classes after that um, the bright side of, des of designing nowadays is that we have all these extra techniques to make super you know make really nice stuff so we'll be learning these and if you can use this, these traditional bases pretty soon you'll be on your way to designing um, with the advanced techniques that will be undeniably your own design right so don't get discouraged with that so if you once if you're able to fold design actually if you're able to design if you're able to independently come up with um, any of these models using the traditional base method uh, and I, I would really love to see what you did um, so there's two things I thought of two things you can do one thing is you could post it on some social media Twitter Facebook Instagram whatever you want and you could, I, I give you permission to plug yourself in the comments so you can post your link there I'll go take a look I'll leave a like whatever and uh, it's free clout for you so you should do that the other option you can do is you can um, so you can actually go to the origami design school discord or or the origami dam but this one's the specific specifically for designing so you click on that link it'll be in the description like here and then uh, so here's the, the channel your finished design so you can go in here drop your picture you could say like this is my sea lion upload and uh, everyone will see it. It will be great. So, oh, it looks like JP Origami is already here. Let's see what he says. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah. Anyways, you should go check out JP Origami. Uh, I'll link him in the description. He's a pretty cool guy. Anyways, yeah. See, so this is it's a great, great group. Drop your stuff, and everyone's very supportive. Uh, also, if you need help, you can go here, ask for help about stuff and whatnot. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll help you out with the homework. All right. Now, if this video helped you, if this helped you understand the basic design process for using just traditional bases, if you're able to successfully design something after watching this, uh, it would be really great if you could if you could drop a subscribe and also share it with other people so they can learn too. All right. Thanks, guys. This is like the original one from like fifth grade or sixth grade or something and so that that goes to show how how basic this method is you don't really need to know much but um it's a little messy of a fold but it's uh this is the original one it's a frog base so you can tell you got the three sails plus the thing in the front that's the four corner flaps and then this thing that got tucked away but it's the end of the boat is the center flap and then the edge flaps got um just hidden inside so that's a frog base. Now this frog base is okay. It's just it's just okay. But next time when we learn about grafting, this is what you can do when you get grafting. You can make a grafted on a whole dragon head onto this. And now this model is pretty 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 dank. But again, this is one piece of paper, you know, spawn in paper where you need them while still keeping it the square. So that's grafting. And stay tuned for next episode. We'll learn how to do that.